Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Today we're going to be reviewing the most infamous blaster I have ever seen in my life. The Doomlands Double Dealer. How bad is it? How cool is it? Let's find out. So this blaster has quite a bit of history, mainly because it is the most catastrophic failure out of any nerf release probably ever, and it completely murdered the Doomland series. Everything after this sold terribly, and they discontinued the series less than two years later, which is incredibly sad, but that leads the question, how bad was this thing? How bad could it have possibly been to nuke the entire future of the whole series? And I'm gonna try and answer that in today's video. But first, we gotta start off with the design. It looks... You know, a lot of times it's pretty easy to talk about a blaster's design because you have things to reference it to. This one, I... I... I have no idea. It looks very cool, I will say that. There are lots of details in here. It looks like some sort of pseudo Tommy gun, machine gun, shotgun, double barrel shotgun thing with airplane wings on it when you put the magazines in. But it, I just described an issue. It looks like an airplane when you put the magazines in. Don't believe me? Ladies and gentlemen, please clear the runway. Flight 1401 is preparing to make its landing. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. Oh no, we're gonna crash! It looks like an airplane when you put the magazines in it. A lot of people complain about this goofy design, but honestly, I don't mind. It is a mood and a half that this thing gives off, and you don't really get the same experience with anything else because, I mean, this is ridiculous. I think there's a reason that they didn't try to copy this design ever again. Oh no. This wasn't the first time, was it? But yeah, I honestly like this design, and of course, they didn't paint both sides, even though you see both sides painted here, it's because I did it myself. Because Hasbro couldn't be bothered to do it, I did it myself. But with that said, let's move on to the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip and a foregrip. This is not a stock. It doesn't count as a stock. It doesn't even make it halfway down my arm. However, the main grip is actually really, really comfortable. It feels great to hold onto this grip. Even though the trigger is, like, look, look, at, look at how I'm having to pull the trigger. I'm pulling it with my knuckle. It does not feel right to pull this trigger. And because of the way the stock is angled, you don't really have a choice but to hold the trigger like that. It's just, it is so dumb. I don't understand why it's like that. They couldn't have moved the trigger a little bit farther forward. Come on, Hasbro, it's not rocket science. People's human hands are not shaped like aliens. Even though this is like a post-apocalyptic thing, so I don't know, maybe people's hands change in the future. I need to shut up and talk about the foregrip. The foregrip, oh, it's really good. It's really, really good. It's just the same as the main grip, but you don't have to worry about the stupid trigger being sunken so far back, so you can just enjoy how comfortable the foregrip is. And if it's too close for you, you can hold on to the big grip guard thing. I don't usually end up doing this, but sometimes I just kind of accidentally hold on to it like that. Though most of the time I do actually hold on to the primary grip. I think it feels really, really good. As for this stock thing, I don't actually know why it's here because all it does is hold two magazines in the worst ways possible. It feels terrible to put the magazines into it. It's like really chewy feeling. It doesn't feel right at all. And it is way too short to use as a stock. This. This is awful. I would rather hold it like this, but I end up using it like this, and I wonder why I'm so cramped, and then I realize, oh, I'm using the stock as a stock, and it doesn't feel right at all. But how does this blaster work? Well, you pull it back, you put two magazines in, you push it forward, you can single shot. Or, it's got slam fire. This is the best Prime I've ever used in my whole life. It's better than the Worker Harrier, it's better than the Alpha Trooper, it's better than the Retaliator, it's better than the Deploy, it's better than every blaster imaginable. It's so good! It's so smooth! It's so buttery and crispy and it just feels great! It's just... Oh my gosh! It's magnificent! This is perfect! So yeah, you Prime it, you shoot two darts. Two. Wait. At once. And the surprising part is that it doesn't have a staggered trigger. 
because this is one plunger tube feeding into both uh, both magazines. Though it has a uh, it has an air restrictor, so if you just put one magazine in, it'll still fire. And if you put the other side in, it still works. And actually, the performance is way better. It shoots really hard with just one magazine. Oh. It's so smooth. It feels so good. I love this Prime. Oh. Well, I have just encountered the issue that it has. It does not like to exist. I know you think the jams are okay. No, it holds a grudge against you for trying to use it. This, th that is painful to look at. And it does these issues constantly because the mechanism is so sensitive. And I have no idea how they designed it with this much of an issue in mind, but it really doesn't like to work. It'll work for you sometimes, but if you go too fast with it, you'll find a lot of issues. Now, it does like to work more if you just put one magazine in it, but it's designed to be used with two magazines. And when you do put two magazines in, you run with it really fast, it will jam on you, and it will jam a lot. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason this blaster killed the Doomland series. Not just because it jams, but when it jams, it murders whatever dart you have in it at the time. And it really does, it really kills the dart, mainly because of the way that this mechanism works. It is two plunger tubes side by side with a gap in the middle. So essentially the jam happens when a dart is pushed too far forwards and it doesn't feed properly into the plunger tube, causing it to bend slightly to the side and then when you push it forwards, it crushes the dart and bends it more to the side. So basically, it will completely destroy your dart and disable your blaster. I think the biggest problem here is the fact that it has locks in it so that when you pull it back, and you push it forwards almost all the way, you can't push it back again to clear out the jam if it happens to jam. So you gotta find a way to force the prime and handle all the way forwards and pull the trigger before you're able to pull it back and clear out the jam. Which is kind of a big deal because it likes to jam a lot when the priming handle is pushed almost all the way forwards, making clearing jams on this thing a titanic pain in the ass! Now, just in case you guys were wondering, I have found a way to avoid the jams, even though it's kind of just delaying the inevitable. When you prime it back, if you push it forward slowly, that helps the dart realign a lot better than if you just pull it back and push it forward really fast. So I'm going to try to do that for this firing demo so that we can avoid losing any more innocent waffle head darts. With that said, let's go with single shot first. It jammed anyways. No! No, 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 no. I think I can save it. I think I can save it. Oh, push it down. Push it down. Just let me do the fiery demo. Let me do the fiery demo. Let's try it again. Yeah, carefully this time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm really trying my best here. Now, I'm not editing any of this out. You guys are getting the full experience as I repeatedly have to save darts from the unreasonably stupid clutches of the double dealer. Let me try and like put this in and just smush the darts down so they're not sticking out. And then push them forward, make sure they're lined up like that. There we go! One shot! Two shots! There we go. That's better. We did it! We made it through two bags! Alright, you brave soldiers. It's time for the slam fire test. I know this is gonna be hard, but you must power through it. For freedom! For America! If you die on the battlefield, your lives will not be in vain. I, it is already like being pushed to the side. Let me line those back up and we'll try slam fire. Yes! Yeah, it did a jam! <laughs> I think that says everything that you need to know. When it successfully clears two magazines and doesn't jam, it's the same as winning the lottery. You feel like a god and a half. But that also brings up the same fact. When it doesn't jam, 
you, you feel like a god and a half. This thing wants to jam constantly and you have to be very deliberate and careful with it to make it not jam and kill all of your darts. I don't know why this happened or how this happened. It seemed like such an easy problem to avoid. Just just get the blaster past the prototype stage before you put it on store shelves. It works just fine with brand new darts, but anything outside of that, you're gonna have a lot of problems with this blaster, and I think that is the sole purpose and the sole reason why this blaster died so fast and why it killed the whole Doomland series. And you know what? The blaster itself is absolutely magnificent. I love the Ergo, I love the Prime, I love the concept of a double magazine fed double barrel shotgun that always shoots two darts at once. You can put two magazines in it. That is the coolest thing ever. It is like a heavy gunner shotgun, which is two of my favorite niches put together at the same time. Plus it's small and compact, plus it looks cool. It's like all my biases are in favor of this and that is exactly why I bought it because this, this is awesome. And I honestly think it's worth trying to fix. Though I'm not sure the unholy infantry of darts that have been lost on the battlefield called the testing procedure would agree with me there, I really like the double dealer. Honestly, I would kind of recommend it if you can fix it. If you can't fix it and you just want the blaster to have the blaster for what it is, stay away from it. It is a nightmare to use, though I unironically find myself dry firing this thing a lot just because it's so comfortable and fun to use. But if you actually want to use it effectively, you better have the tech know how to open this thing up and fix the problems with it. If you can't do that, I don't know what to tell you, you're not gonna have very much fun with this because it's a nightmare that jams all the frickin' time! If you do want to buy a double dealer though, I'll link it in the description below. With that said, thanks for watching everybody, bye!